Bit overripe, that one. Best I could do this week. People just never die when it suits you. <laughs> do they, Doctor? Oh, beg your pardon, uh, Baron. You don't have to count it. It's all there. Always is, always is. See you next week. Lynch, yeah. I may need you sooner than next week. Something very special this time. Oh, I like that. Very special. Yeah. Has a ring of money to it, eh? I want a corpse dead no longer than six hours. Two hundred. No, five hundred. Three hundred. Doug, let's say I'm a patron of science. But I can't promise. Results, not promises. Uh, I don't understand your trusting him so much. Money, Charles, is a miracle drug for people like Lynch. Such a grotesque dream. Or well, perhaps, perhaps he shall be a nightmare. What is not Not to me, not if I can give him light. That's worth anything, anything. Including your own life. Even that. It is the king created by it to the ultimate of peace. To hesitate, to fear, to doubt now with everything I've ever done. Point again. This is my life. But to create life, should man leave that to God? Here on earth, man is God. Go to bed, Charles. Ten, you'll arrive in the morning, you'll want to look at bed. Good night. I thought I would at least deserve a hello. I'm sorry, Tanya. I'm very happy to see you. Your father and I were always happy to see you. Uh, here, let me help you. Thank you. How lovely you look. <laughs> Thomas! Thomas, come here. Thomas? <laughs> would you please take Mademoiselle's luggage? Take the luggage inside. Luggage? Inside, eh? Mm -hmm. Tanya. Mm -hmm. Your father is still dressing. He worked rather late last night. As usual. Is he still experimenting with animal transplants? Well, you know how he is. He's been at it for 20 years. He'll be at it for another 20, but uh, tell me about the university. Well, except for my studies, it was rather boring. But I didn't go there to socialize. Aren't you pleased? I'm like my father, stubborn. When I want something, I get it. And I did. First of my class, I'm now a licensed surgeon. Congratulations, oh. doctor. Father! Father! Oh! So Bye, nice little to see girl. You. <laughs> 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 Is that the way for a licensed surgeon to behave? This one does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Jack Morgan. Poor son of a bitch. They're going to hang him good. Snap his neck for sure. What about it, Simon? You and Harry with me? 
poorest fellow, the best Jack Morgan. Never, never did like him, though. Neither did you, right? I'm waiting, yes or no. Yeah, I'm with you, Tom. And Harry? Where I go, he goes. <laughs> Toast to Jack Morgan. Long may he <laughs> die. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have heard this story many times before. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Father. It's a charming story. You know, Father, the name Frankenstein still echoes through the halls of the university. I'm not surprised, but I stopped caring about those fools when I left them with their hands clapped over their ears 30 years ago. So, please sit down, Charles. Your leg must be tired. No, it's fine. Thank you. Was it difficult? I mean, very difficult, seeing my daughter. Sometimes. Mostly it was my being a woman. The professors have a lot of old-fashioned ideas about a woman's place. I'm sure you will make a fine surgeon. Thank you, Charles. But I do not want to be merely a fine surgeon. What do you want? To assist you, Father, in your work. You know, since I was a youngster, I was always interested in your experiments. Each summer when I was here, I... I would sneak into your laboratory. But it was always locked. I know. But I discovered the other way. The one through the wall. The bedroom wall. Huh. Well, you little devil. I was always curious. Meant to land. I'm curious to see how far you have progressed. And to show you my own progress. I shall be delighted to discuss it with you, of course, as doctor to doctor. But I must warn you that my ideas are quite radical. Even more so than yours, Father. Really? Of course. I am my father's daughter. You are referring to an animal transplant? Human. Another hundred. This order is very delicate. There are certain people to be paid in advance. What people? <laughs> well, Baron, you know, I can't tell you. Professional ethics. Don't speak to me of ethics. If you want what you want, it will cost you another hundred. The way I see it, Baron, you don't have any choice. I'll have to get it for you. Take your time and don't worry. I won't sit down. I wouldn't want to damage this uh, wonderful furniture. Mm. Excuse me. I was... I was looking for my father. Uh, would that be Dr. Marshall? It would not. Well, I never thought the Baron had it in him. But Dr. Marshall would. Hmm. Not on his best night. A drink, eh? Much too early. Never too early for anything. My dear sir, you are an obnoxious man, extremely vulgar. And I'm certain that whatever you are thinking is merely fantasy on your part. I would say that you spend too much time alone in your fantasies. <clears throat> Be careful. It will soften your brain far quicker than whiskey. How can somebody so lovely be such a bitch? It depends on the company I'm with. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a visitor. Mr. Lynch? Yes? I will see you out. Always a pleasure to talk to a lady. Good day, lady. Father? I said I was sorry. I heard you. Oh, yes. 200 now. Yes. Yes. 200 on delivery. Yes. When will it be? Very soon. When? 
to hang Jack Morgan day after tomorrow. So? So he's your man. Me, Lynch, because one day you'll be shaking hands with Morgan in the house. Oh, I'll save my other hand to you, Captain. You don't have much time, Lynch. You're sure to make a mistake one day, and that's the day I'll own you. And it won't be just jail for you, man. You're too clever for that. It's the hanging. That's what you want, and I'll see you get what you want. It's the least I can do. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. I will. Yeah? I will. You hear? <laughs> Doctor. What are you doing here? I was on my way to town and I saw the people. Why? What's going on? Something I'd rather you not see. A hanging. I've never seen a hanging. Nor will you see this one. Now, Father, I may be a woman, but I am also a doctor. Death is nothing new to me. This is not death, Tanya. This is legalized murder. Maybe she should stay to see the difference. Hmm. Maybe she should. Thank you, Charles. Don't thank him yet. Are you here, Jack? And what if I made any difference, you idiot? Short step from here. Why didn't I ever cut your throat? Ready. Requiem eterna in dona ei domine. Et lux perpetua lucia tei. Amen. Tanya knows about the animals. But how? I don't know. She asked me why you still had them, and I didn't. What are we going to do? Not Tanya natural. mustn't find out what. Oh! Hey, up, Baron. Good work, Lynch. Good work. Yeah, thank you. Charles. Go on, Turner. Earn your money. Yes, sir, Baron. I really like doing business with you. It's clean and it's quiet. Was it difficult? As difficult as drinking a bottle of whiskey. And you can see that's not very difficult. One later this time.
Now we're ready. Cut! Uh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't. I was hoping you wouldn't do this. So this is why you no longer use the animals. Human transplants. Tanya, will you please leave? But I can help you. You don't understand. I do, Father. I do. What are you going to do with the brain? Tanya, please. Father, will you both stop treating me like a child? I'm a doctor, a surgeon. I even think like you do. I. No. Not impossible, Tanya. But the heart, the brain, you have to keep them alive. Yes, we've done it before. Inside another human body? We don't need a human body. But you are going to put Morgan's heart and brain into that creature? Tanya, no more questions. But, Bob... I don't want you to get involved. If anything should go wrong, the law would hold you equally responsible. And I don't want that to happen. Soon I'll tell you everything. Please be patient. I'll try. Good luck. Is everything ready? Ready. I hope Mr. Morgan's brain is as cooperative. It will be, Charles. And so for the past 20 years, my experiments with animal transplants have been pointed to this week. All the abuses. I have endured my friends, all the accusations against my sanity, and worse will be thrown into their sanctimonious faces. Looking for something? 
Yes, clouds. I need a storm for my final step, an electrical storm. For only lightning will give the creature life. That's why I haven't transplanted the heart and the brain. Oh, I can keep them alive indefinitely in the laboratory, but once I transplant them, they'll survive only a few hours unless activated by lightning. I want to see how you'll keep them alive. You shall. You will succeed, Father. I will. I promise you I will. And the medical world will be brought to its knees. I want that so much. To see you realize your dream. Something that no one will ever take away from you. They won't have to. I'll give it to them. Bad.
Virginia. He's done it. It's a lie. Oh. It's a lie. Oh, John. Oh. You have to tell me all about... dead and you're worried about his name? You cannot keep this from the police. Not his death. Only the creature. That's impossible. What if it kills again? Its brain is damaged. I warned your father, but... Tanya, no. We must tell Harris. Tell him. But tell him it was a robber. But there is Morgan's body. What did you do with the other corpses? The lie tank. Put Morgan in it. Then you can go to Harris. Please, Charles. I don't know, Tanya. What could you hope to gain? Time. I need to think of some way to save my father's reputation. Please, John. Didn't you love him? You know I did. So do it for him. Animal organs, I believe. Yes, of course. My father has been experimenting in animal transplants. Very interesting. You saw this, Rob. A big man, you say. Yes, he would have to be a very big man. Big enough to... Uh, yeah. oh, what did he steal? Nothing, as far as I can tell. I haven't had time to check everything. My father must have surprised him. Uh, I would think it was your father who was surprised. But uh, what would a, a robber be doing in a laboratory? He wouldn't have known it was a laboratory. He must have seen the light and he wanted to investigate. Perhaps. You said he was a very big man. How big would you say? I don't know. I was asleep. At least half a foot taller than you, Captain. Oh, really? That would make him more than seven feet tall. Are you sure, Dr. Marsh? Well, half a foot, then. After all, he was running away when I saw him. I thought you said you saw him with the Baron earlier. Yes, but all that registered in my mind then was this hulk of a man gripping the Baron. And then you entered a few moments after this robber killed the Baron. I tried to stop him, but he threw me aside quite easily, and I couldn't... And that was the time when you saw him run out? Yes. But you weren't hit? No, I wasn't. How oh, very fortunate. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure this has been quite an ordeal for both of us. Oh. Uh, by the way, the young man... Thomas. Thomas. Where was he? He doesn't live here. He comes each morning very early. Thank you. He didn't believe us. Of course he did. He just tried to impress me. You are marvelous, Charles. Thank you. What now? Now we wait. Yeah, there's no place better on a sunny afternoon than right here. Just so long as I know what oh. I want. 
Nice, cheerful place you have here, Lynch. Very fashionable. Like something out of an insane asylum. Yes, you do have the taste of a connoisseur. The taste of a man who truly knows what is obscene, vulgar, erotic, and simply grotesque. Very clever, the way everything blends together. Things seem to balance. Not one piece out of place. Not one inch of space wasted. It's truly remarkable. I am impressed. Lynch. You're such an ugly man. Mm. What's wrong, Captain? All your cells empty this morning? Oh, on the contrary. As a matter of fact, some friends of yours were kind enough to spend the night with me. I don't have any friends. Oh, but you do. There's Simon Burke and Harry Morris, and not to mention Jim Turner, and that other fellow, the little one with the hunchback. Yeah, were they drunk? Very. You see, they started a brawl in the tap at the sawmill. You do know those. Vaguely. But what does four drunks uh, have to do with me? Huh? You see, the fight was over which one of them was going to pay for the entire bill, which was quite substantial. Your friends drink, you know. Uh, you still haven't answered my question, Captain. Oh, haven't I? No. Well, let me put it this way. Where do four such men come upon enough money for each of them to be able to pay for himself and the other three? Maybe they earned it. Maybe. But doing what? <laughs> Simon and Harry, they can't earn much. After all, how many hangings do we have? <laughs> Not enough to suit you, Captain. Lynch, you disappoint me. I don't pass sentence on anyone. I only arrest them. Uh, drinking alone? Or something that pays the police captain's wages. <laughs> I'm not laughing, Lynch. Just tell me what kind of work they do for you, since you have no legitimate business. Oh, I know you're a banker of sorts, loaning out money at exorbitant rates of interest. But you're hired help. They are collectors. They collect money for me. Yes. I'm sure they do. Well, I'll leave you to your whatever a man like you calls it. The same thing a man like you calls it. One day, Lynch, you're going to tell me the wrong thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. It's useless, Tanya. You won't find the solution there. There isn't one anywhere. I have the solution, Charles. I'm only looking for a way to make it happen. Will you help me? If I can. Will you help me? I cannot commit myself until I know what you consider the solution. Another creature. Tanya, it took your father and me three years to construct the first one. Mine will take less than three weeks. Even if it took three hours, it would be too late. Then there's been another killing. Two. I didn't want to tell you. I was in town today. Everyone in the village is speaking about the monster. That is what they call your father's life's work, a monster. And they're right. They are not right. My father was a genius. And his creation will... It will do nothing but kill. You don't understand. Even without the damage to the brain, the creature has the mind of a murderer. It kills for the sake of killing. It must be destroyed. And Harris will destroy it. How can a man destroy it? No, Charles. There's only one solution. To create a second creature. You'll be creating another monster. Not a monster. An executioner. Our creature will kill my father's murderer. No, it's impossible. Even if you found the right brain, your creature, despite the superhuman strength induced by the lightning, it would need a physical body strong enough to support it. Where would you find such a man? And that's my proposition. 500 pounds if you find me the right person. Yeah, well, what makes you think I can? My father told me. It's all written in his diary. He gave you a lot of money in the three years. I don't want 
money from you. I see. I knew you would. Just for one night. Then I'll find you your man. It won't cost you a thing. It will. I feel nothing but repulsion for you. I don't give a damn how you feel about me. It ain't your feelings I want. Your price is too high. Then go peddle your money elsewhere. I think Captain Harris would find my father's diary very enlightening. <laughs> my selling corpses wouldn't surprise anyone. But your father buying them, now that would give everybody plenty to talk about, eh? Wouldn't it, miss? Now, think about it. No one else can help you. No one. After all, what's one night out of your life? I can't kill you. And after, you can take a bath, and everything will be brand new again. I'll kill him. I'll kill him! You need a drink, Charles. I don't see why you're so upset. A man like Lynch cannot be taken seriously. Still, I would kill him for even suggesting that Thank you... Thank you, Charles. I didn't know that you felt so much about my reputation. I'm sorry. Of course you do. You are a gentleman. And so you only think of me as untouchable. You're wrong. Am I? Do you ever think of touching me? Tanya, please. Does it really bother you to know that a man like Lynch desires me? No. Only that he was vulgar enough to reveal it to you. You never really believed in my father's dreams. You only stayed because of me. What if I did? Then why didn't you tell me? Because you were afraid. You've always been afraid. You're afraid now. We don't need Lynch. All we need is each other. I found him. Thomas. Thomas? Yes, Thomas. Physically, he's perfect. His body's strong and beautiful. Be honest, wouldn't you like to have such a body? What does that have to do with me? Everything, because you love me. I know you do. But you've never done anything about it. Instead of your love for me giving you strength, you let it melt your spine. Stop you it. let it fester inside of you until Stop. all you could do was to look at me with those weird, Stop. hurt eyes. With the eyes of an old man. With the eyes of a cripple, a cripple who could never even dream that I could love him. Could you? Could you love me? Yes. If you look like Thomas. Then love Thomas! I can't love Thomas. He has your mind. Think of it. Think of me. Think of possessing me. Would you like to have my body bend to you? Would you like to make love to me? Yes. Yes. Yes! You can. my brain and my heart in Thomas's body. His heart is as gentle as yours. Thomas, with your brain, is a man I could truly love. No. I won't kill Thomas for you. I'm not a murderer. You were ready to kill Lynch. That was different. Murder is murder. Good morning, Charles. 
Don't think of Thomas now. Think of him after. The way he will be. Last night. Killed by the same man who murdered your father. And Lynch wasn't robbed either, Miss Frank. It's Mrs. Marshall now, sir. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And this man, anyone seen him? Anyone still alive? The young man who was with Sarah Wills, uh, John Masters. And this Mr. Masters, what did he see? He claims it wasn't a man. He said it was a monster. But he was too frightened to satisfy me. However, there's one more witness I would believe. Who is he? Seth Atkins' son. He saw the murderer kill his mother. But the lad's in shock. If and when I'm ever able to talk to him, I... Poor boy. Uh, sorry to bother you, uh, Mrs. Marshall. I'll see you out, Captain. Thank you. You know, I've been wondering, Mrs. Marshall, why would you visit Tom Lynch, especially at his place, and at night? The Baron owed him money, and my wife went to pay it back. Wouldn't it have been better to send for him? Really, Captain? A man like Lynch here. Of course. But then I would think Dr. Marshall should have gone, not you. It was my father's business which made it mine. Nobody else's. Quite. What I don't understand is why would your father owe Lynch money? I find your probing thoroughly impertinent. It always is. Thank you again, and good night. Oh, one thing more. You don't believe in monsters, do you? Of course not. I do. Wait till we've finished. You're worth it, Lynch was. Hey, Jim. Jim. Are you sure Dr. Marshall will want it? Am I sure? Sure, I'm sure. Whatever the Baron was doing with the corpses, Dr. Marshall was helping him. So it must be sure that he's still doing what they were doing. <laughs> He'll thank us good. <laughs> to hell with these facts. He'll thank us good. Money. As long as he pays his good. Come on, this ain't my favorite way to make a, a living. Hey, I ain't gonna... Shh, Jim. Shut up. Listen. make any sense. It's beginning to make a lot of sense. Get those shovels. <laughs> dig it up. Then dig up every one of them dated within the last two months. Just what do you expect to find, sir? Not a damn thing. I 
just laughing at you. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. No, not mad. Never mad at you. Well, that's very kind of you. Come here, I'll help you. Mm. There. I mean, uh, on the chair. May I help you, young lady? Oh, good day, I'm, I'm looking for my brother. Your brother? You must have the Tommy. wrong... Tommy! Uh, Thomas Stack. Ah, he's not here. Have you tried at his home? I went there first. I've not seen him for a few days. Perhaps he's gone on a trip. Tommy? Where would he be? He was never out of the county. It's possible. Perhaps my father's death had something to do with it. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yes, Thomas was very fond of him, and his death must have shocked him. Oh, yes, perhaps. I'm really sorry, but I can't help you. I'm sure Tommy will be here soon. Are you living at the inn? I shall be. Ah, fine, I'll tell him. He'll be so happy to see you. Thank you, Miss... Mrs. But... Marshall. I'm so sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Marshall. Oh, no trouble. We're all very fond of your brother. I'm sure you are. Good day. again, Dad, with the fame he was meant to have. Charles. I liked him, Tommy. I really did. Think of tonight, Charles. Only of tonight. People are talking. They're saying that Baron Frankenstein is responsible. They're saying that he created it that monster. killed him, remember? But it didn't kill his daughter. What does she have to do with it? Well, you know how people are, Captain, especially when they're scared. Right now, they're so scared they may do anything, just anything. Something real crazy, maybe. To them, the name Frankenstein is six leagues below Satan himself. And they don't care who's wearing it. Come on, John. What's wrong? You can't change your mind now. It's too late, Tanya. I killed Thomas. 
You've got to make the means justify the end. For my sake. What if I fail? Charles, Then you fail. I'd rather give my life to you than to the hangman. Is everything clear? No question. No question. Remember that I love you. I'll remember. Now smile for me. That's the last. I do not appreciate your intrusion, Captain. I'm trying to find your father's murder, Miss, Mrs. Marshall, and I don't see how that could be an intrusion. Of course you're right. Please forgive me. I've been up all night with my husband. Then he's seriously ill. It could be. He's resting now, and after my breakfast, so will I. Have you made any progress, Captain? Not much, but the murderer has. Two more men have been killed, Jim Turner and Bill Jessup. They work for Lynch. Oh, you wouldn't know them. They're not exactly the kind you'd invite for tea. Julia, I've seen it. And you think that Tommy is somehow involved with this monster? Well, not in creating it, but I think he found out about it by chance. And Mrs. Marshall? She's part of it, too? Yes, she's lied too many times not to be. And she and Dr. Marshall, they would have to kill Tommy, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? Maybe not. Who would believe Tommy? I would. You would, too, Paul.
Americans headed straight for the Frankenstein estate. Let's go, John. When I remove the stitches and your hair goes back, no one will see the difference. In the meantime, this wig will do perfectly. Now, Charlie, put your hands like this. When I release the paper, you try to catch it between your hands before it reaches the floor. Yeah. But you must look into my eyes. <coughs> Bravo, Charlie. <coughs> Reflexes perfect, pulse normal. <laughs> Everything. <coughs> How could I possibly know our storm would come in time? Of course you couldn't. One thing more, Charles. You see that heavy table over there? That one? Go and lift it. Go on, Charles. young man again. Handsome, strong, intelligent, and beautiful man. Mrs. Marshall! Mrs. Marshall! What is it? Captain Harris, I insist on seeing you. You must see him, Tanya. He'll just keep on coming back. Come on. Go and see him. I must see Dr. Marshall. Impossible. He's so extremely ill, I cannot see him. I'm not asking your permission. Henry, Mrs. Harris, this is a... Yes, it is, Mrs. Marshall. I shall report you to your superior. You do that. Please leave my home. Not until I see your husband. Really, you have no right, Captain Harris. That's far enough, Captain. I'm sorry, Captain, but my illness is quite contagious. You shouldn't risk coming any closer. I want to speak to you alone. Whatever you have to say, I want my wife to hear it. Very well. I came to warn you about the monster that you and Baron Frankenstein created. I hold you responsible in the deaths of eight people, including the Baron. Of course, you can prove it. If I could, I would be here to arrest you. I know that you are my proof. I want you alive, Doctor. Why should anyone want to kill my husband? Not anyone. Only the monster he helped to create. Of those killed, four were responsible for giving it life. You, Doctor, are the fifth and last. That's absurd, Captain. How could Lynch and those other two... By men? providing your father and your husband with corpses. I don't have to tell you how they were used. How else are we to know what you are talking about? Those jars in the laboratory. It won't be difficult to prove they contain human organs and not animals. No, Doctor. You never considered the creature might not appreciate your merit. That's why he killed the Baron, three other men. That's why he must kill you. Why didn't he kill Charles when he killed my father? Because your husband wasn't in the laboratory at the time. This is the most extraordinary fable I've ever heard. You really disappoint me, Captain. A robber killed the Baron. As for those other two pyramids of integrity, anyone could have had sufficient reason to kill them. Perhaps it's your incompetence that's led your imagination awry. I suggest you take a Very well. Day. I've warned you. Remember, lies can't keep you alive, Doctor. But I can. Your concern is a great comfort to me. Good night, Captain. I don't know what you've done with Thomas, but I'll find out. And when I do... We must get away tonight, Charles. No, Tanya. But, darling, Harris and his men will find the monster. They'll destroy it. They don't know how. I do. Every available man. I want this place surrounded. And make sure the men tell no one, especially their wives. Now hurry. Yes, sir. You don't know where he went. It'll find me. 
tonight. Tonight it will be here. Because you know that no matter which of us survives, you still win? You do know. You've always no. known. Get my oh. Captain. 